Natural Selection 2 is a real-time strategy cross-first-person shooter game. What that means in reality is, hey, you play some StarCraft, you move some units around, all those units do what you tell them. You are God. They will move no matter what. In Natural Selection 2, you look down on the battlefield in a real-time strategy view and all the units on the ground, all the people, all the aliens, all the, the vehicles and the weapons, they are all real human beings playing alongside you. So say you've got a team of six versus a team of six, one person on each team of six plays in the real-time strategy view. So we like to say that the commander has strategic control over the battlefield, but each individual player has tactical control over themselves. So, tactical freedom to choose their own weapons, choose where they go. If you receive an order from a commander, that's a waypoint that you receive, and you can then say, well, hey, I've got a waypoint to go and attack that resource node. But you know what? I'm not gonna go straight in there through that door. I think it would be better if I went around the back and assaulted it from the back. So you have that freedom, totally. You have the freedom to say, I'm gonna do this with a rifle, or I'm gonna do this with a shotgun, or whatever. We have two completely asymmetrical sides. The Kara, who are the alien, they're animalistic aliens, and the Frontiersmen, which are humanoid marines. Now both these teams are so asymmetrical, it's not even funny. The Kara are life form based. You can play as any one of five life forms. As you collect more resources throughout the game, you can become different life forms and add different abilities to those life forms, depending on what the commander has chosen strategically. The marines, on the other hand, they're equipment based, so they'll have different weapons, different suits of armor, things that they add to themselves to fight the aliens. So very, very different style of play. I mean, the aliens, you could be running on the walls one moment, change into a different life form and be flying for the next. Or you could be a fade, which means you blink from place to place. So huge diversity of movement on the Marine team. Obviously, you've got, you've got to have flamethrowers if you're going to deal with aliens. You've got jetpacks, exosuits, giant mech armor suits with miniguns and claws. So there's a huge amount of variety on both, time, on both teams. So for the alien team, for example, if the commander said, I want to go down a defensive route at the start of this game. So they started a game and I said, I want to be a bit defensive. Maybe I'm worried this other team's got a good rush coming or something. That defensive choice then informs the aliens what they can, what they can have. That might mean they can have things like extra armor or extra regeneration for their health. Now it's their choice what specific defensive traits they choose, but the commander has chosen a defensive, a defensive direction strategically or maybe he chooses stealth and deception, or maybe instead of that, movement-based abilities. So there's, there's different paths the commander chooses that then allows the alien life forms to choose themselves. What's, maybe I like to be very stealthy, I like to be very quiet. I can become very quiet. So it's different combinations. Now on the marine side, the commander will say, hey, I'm gonna research shotguns. Therefore, you have access to shotguns. So it's, it's about what the commander researches. I'm gonna give you extra armor. I'm gonna research exosuits for you so you can steamroll the enemy base. I'm going to research jetpacks, etc., etc. Like in any RTS, you need to gain territory to get resources. And that's crucial for the commander. I mean, the commander can't do all this stuff on their own. He or she must have a team that moves out, gets a, a point, like a resource point, maybe there's a resource nozzle in a room, holds that point long enough to build the structure on top of it to cap those resources and then move out elsewhere. It's a leader-team relationship. That's what gets me so excited about this game. It gets me excited because this is a game that allows you to have, a lead, to have a leadership experience. And there are so many situations in life where that leadership experience comes up. In our workplaces, in our daily life, in our families, leadership comes up and being a team player comes up. So this game is exciting because it brings that experience to gaming. And we have so many experiences in gaming. You know, all these shooters, all, all these great real-time strategy games, all these great RPGs that give us an experience of, say, being a conjurer in an amazing fantasy land. Well now, let's have the experience of leadership. Let's bring that into video games. What's so great about video games? A lot of people might come into the game and, and think, well, I'm the commander, therefore I tell everyone what to do. And they'll find they don't win a lot of games that way. And maybe uh, through experience they find, well, hey, if I actually talk to these people and, and discuss the strategy while maintaining a bit of executive power, now they're really listening to me. And now this game is, now, now I'm winning games. Right now we can do up to 12v12 on either side and we'll hopefully get better and better, more players as we get performance higher and higher. But it's an interesting concept you've raised because really the sky is the limit within us too. If there's a different game mode out there that you want to see, because the game is open source, you can make that happen. Everybody's allowed to make content in National Section 2. And the benefits being a tiny indie team with seven people in our office and a handful of people off-site full-time and part-time, the benefit of being open to the community is massive because you get content you couldn't have had. So this game has taken so long to develop because we really shot for the moon. We really shot for the moon with this. We went for our own engine, very complex gameplay. Uh, very, well, I'd like to say very deep gameplay, not complex. Uh, a lot of game code that needed to be written, a lot of art that needed to be created and iterated on. Now, because we chose to shoot for the moon and we only have a tiny team, 
that's why it has taken so long. We feel that we'll be, you know, people are going to look at this five year development and see and say, well, I can see why it took five years. And know what? It, it, didn't, it doesn't matter that it took five years because it was done right. It was done well. And the time was taken to make sure that Natural Selection 2 is the game that we all want it to be.